Well, here we are. It's about uh, three o'clock on Tuesday afternoon, approximately five hours before kickoff. You join me in the walking dressing room with Jeff and Colin, who have quite kindly allowed us a little insight into what a non-league side's preparation is like when they come up against league opposition in the FA Cup. Uh, Jeff on my left, Colin here. But, uh, Jeff, when we start, it's, it's a double act in, in every sense of the word, isn't it, with you and Colin? Yes, um, we've been together now for, I've been here ten years, Colin's been with me as my number two for the last seven. He's done a magnificent job, job. he's one of the top non-league coaches around, and um, together, and when we're good friends off the park, which is very important mm. to us, we talk every day, three or four times a day, and all decisions are made jointly. Obviously, I have the ultimate decision, mm -hmm. um, but we do it together. Mm. So your job is very much the manager of the club? Yes. And Colin, your job very much on the coaching side, on the training field? Well, uh, the, the official title I've got is assistant manager, mm. coach, so obviously... Uh, How many or... titles do you want? Assistant manager, well, coach, it, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a bit heavy, really. <laughs> yeah. But you enjoy that part of the game? Yeah, I mean, I, I've been in coaching now for 27 years, mm -hmm. so I mean, it's a long time and uh, it's something that I've really always enjoyed and as Jeff well knows, I've never ever wanted to be a manager because mm -hmm. I enjoy it most of all out on the training pitch with the players and that's, that's the way I look at the game. So it suits you both? Great, very yeah. much so. The, the, the draw? Jeff, how, how did you greet the draw? Barnet away. What were your first you and Well, I must be quite honest with you, Andy. I was very disappointed when the draw was made, only in as much that we were away from home. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to be at home. Um, once it had sunk in, um, which took probably, you know, ten minutes, I thought, mm -hmm. well, we've got to go to Barnet. Um, we prepare professionally, as we always do, for any game, whether it's Vauxhall Conference mm -hmm. or FA Cup. Mm -hmm. And, and we did that, just that. And um, everybody knows exactly what happened at Barnet on that day. Mm. Do you prepare, when you say you prepare, Colin, uh, you and Jeff, mm -hmm. we all know that, that, that league clubs will, will send people to go and watch opposition well in advance to, to pick up any little tips about the weaknesses, the strengths. Do you two go, or do you send people to watch, well, to watch Barnet? Or did you see them play? Well, I think that the problem we've got is that within the non-league environment, mm -hmm. At the end of the day, we know that we, f we feel strongly that we should have po possibly a reasonable scouting staff mm. uh, available to us. But unfortunately, due to economics, we have to spread it up between us. And invariably, in this occasion, which we always do, as Jeff said, we chat about it and, and Jeff went and watched him himself. Mm. So then I go with the team on my own. Uh, I'm not saying it's always ideal, no. but because of our partnership mm -hmm. and our understanding, uh, about the game and what, how we reflect on different situations that occur, then I, I, I don't think there has been a problem. But I still feel, personally, I think Jeff agrees, that I think that we should have some scouting mm. staff available to mm. us. But unfortunately we haven't. <laughs> you can always say <laughs> that's football. Mm. But having seen them, Jeff, you, you couldn't have envisaged that the game would finish the way it did with, with eight goals and, and, and four apiece. No. That must have been an incredible day of, of mixed emotion. It was, um, because having watched them play Chesterfield, um, I was most impressed with Barnet, and I worked my way around the ground, was talking to various supporters, and they kept telling me that, um, um, you know, they're worth the two goals mm -hmm. going down the hill. Yeah. Um, did, did the hell affect you? Are you actually, the, the shots we're watching now, Jeff, are you playing down the hill? We're playing down the hill. We actually had a plan that, that backfired on us, we lost, <laughs> as usual. We, we lost the toss. We wanted to go up the hill, uh -huh. because we know that... Uh, uh, Barnet always liked to, to come down the hill uh, second half. Uh, we lost a toss, so we went down. Um, we played absolutely magnificently as we're watching the goals go in. Lenny Dennis is disbanding, I think, the third one there. Um, that's the best performance I've seen from Woke inside for 45 minutes in 10 years. Mm. Now, I don't say that too lightly because people remember Woke in for the West Brom game, mm -hmm. the Everton mm -hmm. match. That's right. Um, Barnet just didn't see which way we were coming. Um, but, of course, um, the second 45 minutes were absolutely totally reversed. 3 0, Colin. It must have been beyond your, your wildest expectations. Yeah, I mean, I think at that stage of the game, if anybody said we'd been 3 0 up, we would have probably thought, well, you know, that isn't the way we probably would have interpreted it from the kickoff. Mm. But as I say, in saying that, um, collectively over the first 45 minutes, we, our, our approach play was excellent, our passing and moving was excellent, and we caused them many, many mm -hmm. problems. And as I say, we could have, in fact, possibly been 4 0 up. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we're sitting there and we feel fairly comfortable at that stage. So you come out after half-time and, and so how do you feel when, when this happens and, and, and they get two goals back, Jeff? Well, when they got the second one, certainly I was starting to think we're going to throw this away because the floodgates had opened then and mm. um, we were sitting far too deep, as you can see now. Mm. 
Um, and but again, is that, was that the slope? Did the slope, you think, subconsciously throw you? Yeah, psychologically. Someone said to me, tired legs. I said, no, it's tired minds. Right. Um, psychologically, in their minds, they're thinking, you know, we've got to defend this slope. Right. And we had a front two about 25, 30 yards away from the rest of the players. Wow. And then the midfield players were getting sucked into the back. And consequently, we gave ourselves no end of problems. And what, are you do, what are you doing? What are you thinking, Colin? There is, is there anything you can do? Are you thinking tactically that I can, that I can do to put a stop to this? Or do you, is it a case then where you're saying, "Well, boys, you know, you, there's nothing I can do. You've got yourselves in trouble. You've, you've now got to dig yourself back out." I always think that you know whatever sort of football you follow, mm. in hindsight, you can always say, "Oh, we could have done this. Mm -hmm. We could have done that." Whether people give us credit for it or not, I don't know. But in non-league, we do think quite a lot about the game mm -hmm. once it's been played. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you watch the goals on the television mm -hmm. and Jeff and myself speak about it afterwards on the Sunday. If I, if I was sitting here again now, I could say to you quite technically that, yes, they played mm -hmm. three at mm -hmm. the back. Mm -hmm. They went five in midfield mm -hmm. and they went two up front. Mm -hmm. We went a bit negative in midfield, mm -hmm. for my liking. Mm -hmm. What we should have done was left Scott still in a more advanced mm -hmm. position we should have pushed Lenny Dennis out wide on one of their back three players, mm -hmm. Clive Walker wide on the other, and I felt that we were too negative in mm -hmm. our approach. I think the slope was significant, mm -hmm. but I think that we were too negative about what we were trying to do in imposing the same sort of problems that we imposed on them in the first 45, although I do concede that I think the slope was partly significant. But a big goal came along soon after that, didn't it? At 3-2, it was important that if there was going to be an expo that you felt that you got it. Yeah, I think the first thing to take on board was the fact that we wanted to try and keep it tight for the first 20 minutes. We mm. failed to do that. <laughs> and um, But when we did get the fourth one back through Scotty Still, I had a feeling then that maybe it just would be our day. I could and see the West on. Brom headlines repeat themselves yeah. all over again. <laughs> um, but all credit to Barnett, back they came and um, got two more and possibly could have had another couple. I mean, that one there, Lawrence was very disappointed with that. I and mean, then he made a couple of world-class saves mm -hmm. previous, but he was most unhappy with that one that's just gone in. And how um, late was the, was the equaliser? Was it late in the game, lads? Um, there was still about 10, 15 minutes ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 78. Yeah. Yeah. So there was plenty of time for yeah. the winner. 78, yeah. And we could have even won it ourselves. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. um, we had two good chances. Clive Walker just clipped the foot of a post. And Shane Y, I think, from about 20 yards, um, possibly could have scored himself as well. Mm. Um, but having said that, uh, Barnett could have had three or four mm. more. So that's the